a bit of a mixed cloud situation today after a full day of pure cloud yesterday. Bit of drizzle, bit of showers. We desperately need rain here. Anyway, guys, we have 100, 100 amps outside charging the vehicle. The pool pump is running full power and also the Bitcoin miner is running. I'm trying to recharge the battery at the same time because yesterday morning it was down to 18%. Yeah, 18, not 80, 18, 18. I had to charge the car for a longer trip, so I used all the energy out of the battery. So I hope today I can recharge at least to 60-70%, which hopefully gives us enough power for the hot water system and all the other loads here in the off-grid garage and around the house. So you have seen I have prepared the whiteboard already. We are doing a bit of a tutorial today. But first of all, welcome back to the off-grid garage, guys. While the JK developer team is working on a new firmware update for the JK BMS, I think we've got some time to kill and I thought why not doing another tutorial and show you something which is frequently asked under my videos. And the question asked here is, Andy, when should I start balancing my lithium iron phosphate battery pack? Well, while this seems like a very obvious question, many people still get it wrong. You won't believe how many emails I'm getting from my viewers. And then when we look at the parameters and settings of their setup, the balancing start voltage always catches my eye. And this is regardless if they have active balancers or passive balancers like built into the BMS. And some of this misunderstanding has something to do with the lithium iron phosphate charge curves, which are super flat and only at around 95% we see an increase in voltage. And this is then the time when we start balancing. And if people using the passive balancer in the BMS, like 50 to 150 milliamps of balance current. The misconception here is that because the balancer or the balance current is so small, I have to start balancing early because the balancer needs more time. While this makes sense from a logical perspective, it doesn't make sense with lithium iron phosphate. So let's use the whiteboard and get some facts straight to start with. So the basic question is, why do we need balancing? Well, we all know the battery cells in our battery pack are not 100% the same. And while charging and discharging, they're burning off different amounts of energy due to internal resistance, connection to the bus bar system, and also difference in the chemical goop inside the battery. It is not 100% the same. Even they're coming from the same factory, from the same assembly belt, that could be different. And hence, one battery cell in your pack has more loss than the other. And if you don't balance at all, over time, this will get worse. And a weak cell gets always weaker and a strong cell gets always stronger. That means strong cells will have a higher voltage, weak cells will have a lower voltage. So the voltage difference between your highest and your lowest cell will increase over time. This is what we call the voltage delta or the deviation. And you want to keep this as small as possible. That's why we top balance. We fully charge the batteries and at the top when they are fully charged, we try to make them all the same. Because with lithium iron phosphate batteries, this is the only point where you can actually top balance your batteries. You have to fully charge them. You cannot balance at any other point. And I'm not talking about bottom balancing here because this is something from the past. Because these days we have electronics, a BMS, which takes care of the top balancing. And there's no BMS on the market which actually does a bottom balancing. It doesn't exist because it doesn't make sense. So if you don't balance your batteries, the deviation, the voltage difference gets higher and higher with every single charge and discharge cycle. And this means the battery cell with the highest voltage will get an even higher voltage with the next charge cycle. And over time, you're ending up with a battery pack which has very different voltages in their battery cells and also different state of charge. One battery could be at 100% state of charge while the other one is at 80% state of charge. That means when you discharge your battery, you can only use the 80% capacity because the weakest cell determines the overall capacity of your whole battery pack. So obviously we've got a 4S battery here, four battery cells in series. It's a 12 volt battery and our goal is to charge it to 13.8 volts. So the main question is now, when should you start balancing this lithium iron phosphate battery? And the answer is very easy. You have your desired charge voltage and you divide this one by the amount of battery cells. So in this case, 13.8 volts divided by four is 3.45 volts. And this should be your balance start voltage. 
And in this scenario, the balancer would not start because none of the cells is over 3.45 volts. And it makes totally sense because there's nothing to balance, right? Your pack is 100% balanced. And in this ideal scenario now, when all your battery cells are 100% top balanced, the current going through your battery would be 0 amps because this voltage here is the same as the sum of all your single cell voltages. So the charger has the same voltage as your battery. There's no voltage difference and hence there's no charge current. So why should you not set your balance start voltage to 3.4 volts or even 3.3 volts? As I often see this still, even they want to charge to 14 or even 14.2 volts, they set 13.4 volts as a balance start voltage. Because the balance current is so small, I have to start early. So, and here is why starting at 3.4 volts or even earlier does not make sense at all if your target voltage is 13.8 volts. Yeah? We now have a slight imbalance between these two cells here. These two are still on target, but this one is a bit lower than our target of 3.45 volts. And this one is a bit higher than um, 3.45 volts. So if you start balancing at 3.4 volts already, what would the balancer do with these batteries here? Exactly. It would start discharging all of them because they are higher than 3.4 volts. But ideally you want to have your battery at 13.8 volts divided by 4. So all the cells ideally would have 3.45 volts. So why would you balancing these ones? They are already at the desired voltage. Makes no sense. Balancing this one makes sense because it is above our target voltage of 3.45 volts. Balancing this one here makes even less sense because this is under our target voltage of 3.45 volts. It has already a lower voltage and we are still keeping discharging it. That makes no sense at all here. So the balancer should not touch these two cells here because they are correctly charged. It should discharge this one, correct. And of course, it should not discharge this one even further because this is already low. And this is why starting balancing at 3.4 volts does not work. So here with the correct balance start voltage set, it wouldn't do anything with this one. It wouldn't do anything with this one. It would bring this one down and it wouldn't do anything with this one. The result would be if it brings this voltage down, your charger will actually start introducing a small current again because the battery voltage wants to go down, but the charger keeps a constant at 13.8. And this small charge current will obviously recharge your battery, which is low. It will also recharge these two a little bit here. So the charger will eventually start balancing these two as well. So maybe they start climbing in voltage just a tiny bit. And this one has already come down. So in this case, it would try to push these ones down and leave this one alone. And with a small charge current through your battery pack, this one will recharge over time until it hits 3.45 volts. These ones will come down and hit 3.45 volts and the balancer turns off altogether. So obviously, if you want to charge your battery to 14.2 volts divided by 4, you should start your balancer at 3.55 volts. So and again, if you have a look at this scenario here, if you set your balance start voltage to 3.45 volts, but your target is 14.2 volts for your whole battery, the balancer would now start balancing all of your four batteries here even you're trying to reach 3.55 volts. So you're trying to recharge all your batteries, but the balancer wants to discharge your batteries. And you can see how the balancer has to work against the charger. But setting your balancer to 3.55 volt to start, it will allow all four cells to recharge. And only if one cell hits 3.56 volts, for example, it starts discharging this one cell because this one is over our target voltage while all the other cells are still getting charged and the voltage is increasing. So and here are the examples again with a 48 volt battery. So you can set your charge voltage, your CVL, your target charge voltage of your battery pack to 56.8. 
you divide this by 16 and you have a balance start voltage at 3.55 volts. This would be the voltage in an ideal case all your 16 battery cells will have and then it makes up 56.8 volt. Or as I charge to 55.2 volts divided by 16 is 3.45 volts again. So just take your desired charge voltage of your whole battery bank divided by the amount of battery cells you have 16 8 or 4 depending on your system voltage and you have your balance start voltage don't start too early it makes no sense and this rule is regardless if you use the passive balancer if you use the 70 mil passive balancer of your bms or if you use one of these active balancers here with a voltage detection relay or the good old knee active balancer, you set the balance start voltage for all these balancers to your target voltage, your desired pack voltage divided by the amount of batteries you have in your pack gives you your balance start voltage. So I don't want to see any configurations anymore where people have set the balance start voltage to 3.4 or even to 3.3 volts. Guys, this does not work with lithium iron phosphate batteries. If you have lithium ion batteries, it's different and you can start balancing way earlier because here the voltage curve is steep and linear to your state of charge. So with the lithium ion chemistry, it makes actually sense to start relatively early to balance, especially when you have passive balancers with 50, 60 milliamps only. And this is basically where these designs are coming from. Yeah, DALI, 20 milliamps. But then lithium iron phosphate came out of the market and that just changed the voltage settings in their BMSs and kept all the balancers the same way. And now you're seeing this is not going to work anymore. The balance current is not sufficient because we only start balancing when our battery is full. And below that, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't even work. All right, guys, so far this little tutorial from today, when to start balancing lithium ion phosphate, a frequently asked questions under the videos and in the emails. Guys, please do not send me emails. I've got like 150 unanswered emails in my inbox. It's a shame you're spending all this time writing it and I'm not able to answer because there are just too many. Leave all your questions, all your comments down under the videos. That's where I am. I'm reading everything. And that's where all the other wonderful and beautiful people are helping you out as well. Talking about wonderful and beautiful people, thank you so much for your generous donations here on the channel. I've got the spat link under each of the videos. So if you want to buy me a beer, I'm looking forward to it. Guys, and until the next video when we do something completely different. You stay charged, stay safe, and thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye bye. Just so you know, we've got 214 amps outside.